It's Genesis, the first chapter, starting with the first verse. And you can see these words are something very similar. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And the darkness was on the face of the deep. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Mm -hmm. And God called the firmament heaven, so the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields the seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind, and God saw it, and it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on earth. And it was so. Mm -hmm. This morning, I just love the book of Genesis. <laughs> I love the first chapter. And I want to preach from the subject this morning. Let there be. Yes. All right. Let there be. You know, any preacher worth his salt could find tons of sermons out of Genesis 1 alone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm just amazed with let there be. Yes. That word let mm -hmm. means not to prevent or forbid. It basically means to allow, to permit. To give permission to to authorize, to sanction, to grant, to give the right to to license, empower, enable, entitle. It means to allow to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things I understand about Genesis and the whole Bible, as a matter of fact, I believe what is written in Second Timothy three sixteen through seventeen. That tells us all scripture is given by inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, mm -hmm. for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good word. That's what 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 tells us. So I believe. How many of you know that we can study God, mm -hmm. but we can't put God under a microscope or test him in a laboratory? Yeah. We can only with confidence know about God mm -hmm. and what God chooses to reveal to us. Mm -hmm. We are also confident that what God chooses to tell us is profitable and useful for us. And we find that and we believe that from the perspective of the Bible. But see, it's something about the Bible. The Bible is, well, we, we, must, but we must be able to understand it literally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is, we have to be as straightforward and true according to its literary context. 
That sounds strange to some of us. It sounds strange to me. Mm -hmm. But we have to be able to understand it from a straightforward because it's true and because we are getting it from its literary context. Mm -hmm. But that's not all. The Bible is much more than a book. It's a library of books. Mm -hmm. And it's books written in different literary forms. Mm -hmm. There are some portions of the Bible that gives us a historical account. Mm -hmm. There are some portions that give us poetic account. And some give us prophetic accounts. Yes. So we must understand the Bible literally according to its literary context. Which means you have to know what you're reading and studying. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> For example, David, when he wrote in Psalm 6, the 6th verse, he said, All night I make my bed swim. <laughs> I drench my couch with my tears. Mm -hmm. David basically used a poetic literary form. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that David didn't literally mean that he cried so much that he flooded his room and set his bed floating. So you have to understand literary form when it's being communicated. And we'll see that in Psalm 119, 128, where it says, Therefore, all your precepts concerning all things I consider to be right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With great confidence, the psalmist proclaimed the inerrancy, inerrancy, inerrancy of God's word. That's it. God's word was right. Mm -hmm. It wasn't wrong. And it was right concerning all things, regardless and no matter if we like it or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know that's why most people don't read the Bible? They don't like what's in it? <laughs> My mind. It arouses guilt and sometimes anger based off of our lifestyle when we read what the Bible has to say about living according to what God's words declare that we should live like. Yeah, yeah. When the Bible gives us history, it is right and true. The events actually happen as described. We like to look at it and say, that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. How could it be? We might not understand how it may be, but we have to understand that it was right and true and happened as described. That's it. When the Bible gives us poetry, it is right and true. I don't care what Kate Turabian say, I don't care what MLA say, I don't care what APA say or any other writing credential organization say, when the Bible gives us poetry, it is right and true. Yes. The feeling and experiences were real for the writer and it was true to their human experience. Mm -hmm. When the Bible gives us prophecy, and we definitely don't like the prophecy of the Bible. Right. Mm. It is right and true, even when we don't like it. Mm -hmm. Even when it don't make us feel good. Even when it makes us feel guilty on how we are living, it is right and true. Mm -hmm. The events described will come to pass just as it is written. All right. That don't sound too good to some of us sometimes. But when the Bible gives us instructions, it is right and true. Yeah, yeah. It truly does tell us the will of God and the best way of life, even when we don't like it. Yeah, yeah. When the Bible tells us of God, it is right and it is true. Because it reveals to us what the nature and what the heart and what the mind of God is all about. And as much as we, in our limited minds, 
can comprehend. So if we don't approach the Bible this way, then we can only come to it with how we feel mm. about the Bible. All right. Yeah. How we feel mm. about the Bible. I woke up this morning and I didn't feel the most energetic. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And when I don't feel energetic, if I'm trying to read, it's going to bore me. Uh -huh. It's going to make me not want to continue mm. because I didn't feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. All right. But how many of you know it's not about how we feel right. when we approach the Bible? Uh -huh. Some of us approach the Bible from a feeling of guilt over mm -hmm. how we might have treated somebody. Some of us approach the Bible out of feeling of insecure because of the lack of financial resources that we might have. Mm -hmm. But we shouldn't approach the Bible based on how we feel. Yeah. We have to decide what is true or false about the text, which is based off of what the text is telling us. Making ourselves greater than the text is what we do when we read the text based off of how we feel. So the teachings of the Bible have many applications. Mm -hmm. They only have one true interpretation. And I want to say that again because I don't want us to miss that. It has many applications, but only one interpretation. That's it. All right. All right. Sometimes the interpretation is easy to discern and sometimes it's not. But God meant something with the text in the Bible as it is revealed to humankind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the only proper way to interpret Genesis, in particular chapter 1 that was read early, is not to interpret it at all. <laughs> Why are we trying to interpret with our limited minds? Mm -hmm. That is, we accept the fact that it was meant to say exactly what it says. Uh -huh. You know, too many of us want to say, you know, I believe what God meant was, how are we going to try to say what we think God meant? Yeah, yeah. You know, I get mad when people try to tell me what I know I said. Right. Uh -huh. Especially when you tell me wrong what I said. No, I didn't. Uh -huh. That ain't what I said. And I get smart sometimes. And I know that's something that I have to work on. But if I feel like this, I can imagine how you feel sometimes when somebody try to put words in your mouth. Oh, yeah. So who are we to try to put words in God's mouth? Yeah. We believe the Bible is not a book of science. But yet, where it touches science, it speaks truth to science. Mm -hmm. After all, if the Bible is false in regard to science mm. or other things that we can prove, then we can't regard it as reliable in regard to spiritual matters either mm -hmm. that all we right. can't objectively prove. That's right. Uh -huh. <clears throat> we come to the Bible knowing the copies we have in our hands, King James, NIV, NLT, NRSV, and there are so many different duplicates of what we know to be our Bible. Mm -hmm. And though these duplicates are not perfect, they are not exact writings which God perfectly inspired, mm -hmm. what we can know is the Old Testament by seeing the incredible care and reliability that was put into it by the scribes that has been demonstrated by the discovery of things like the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm. There are things that is in place that it takes sometimes hundreds of years to be discovered. Sometimes we might not live in the time frame of our physical life to see all of what God has put forth in action through his word. Okay. But we can know this by the New Testament, by knowing that because of the earlier manuscripts and a greater number of the ancient manuscripts, the New Testament usually refer back to it as 
a witness to the truth of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we come to the Bible and I hope and pray that we all approach the Bible. If not like this, we begin to. Mm -hmm. Knowing the unique importance of the Bible, in particular, the book of Genesis. I, I, I really believe the Bible will be incomplete and probably incomprehensible without the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. What else can you start than the beginning? Yeah, yeah. Genesis sets the stage of the entire drama or play, I guess. Yeah, yeah. What the that play or drama? She's a <laughs> she's our actress. I think the book of Genesis it sets the stage for the entire drama of redemption. Thank you, God. Mm. Yes. Which unfolds in the entire book of the Bible. All right. Almost all the important doctrines, all the important teachings of the Bible have their foundation and start yeah, yeah. in the book of Genesis. Mm-hmm. I love the book of Genesis. As a matter of fact, in the book of Genesis was probably the first story I ever heard was about the story of Adam and Eve and yep. the story of Noah. Mm -hmm. So it got my attention at an early age. I love the book of Genesis. Genesis gives the foundation of the doctrines of sin, the fall, mm -hmm. and how God redemption and justification came to be. That's it. The book of Genesis tells us the promise of the Messiah and what Jesus Christ would do with his life. It tells us the personality and the person of God. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't want to study the book of Genesis as a as an in-depth study? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It talks the book of Genesis shows us the origin of the universe. How God, through order, in spite of complexity, created the entire universe the solar system, the atmosphere, and the hydrosphere, life, humankind, marriage, good and evil, mm -hmm. languages, government, culture, mm -hmm. nations, religion. These are all founded in Genesis. Mm -hmm. And it's precisely because people have abandoned the truth of Genesis that our world as we know it right now is in such a chaotic state. Mm -hmm. Read Genesis. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go back to the book of Genesis and read it over and over. Genesis, I probably preach from Genesis more than any other book. Uh, I study from Genesis more than any other book because of its power. Yeah. 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 It helps us to see what God is trying to reveal to us through our life. So as we see the passages and amazed at the language God used, let's look at what God said when God said, let there be. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Let there be. It said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth. And the Bible says in verse number three, then God said, God first words were, let there be. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The first three words of God that came out according to the book of Genesis was, let there be. I'm amazed out of all the words that I know in the English vocabulary out of all the words that we all know, how is it that the word let was the first one? Mm -hmm. Let, meaning to allow, mm -hmm. permit, give permission to, to authorize. That word let, let there be. When I think about it, what is your let there be? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Because when God said let there be, whatever came after be 
It came. Mm -hmm. It happened. Mm -hmm. We need more let there be's in our life. Yeah. We need to be let there be in every day of our life. Thank mm -hmm. you, God. Uh -huh. So, before I sit down, very quickly, I'm going to share with you, and Matt, you might agree with some of these, but I'm going to share with you some of the let there be's that I thought about as I prepared this message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, let there be love in the world. Yes, Jesus. All right. And because God said let there be, and when God said let there be, it came, I believe it will come as well. Mm -hmm. yes. So let there be love in the world. Yes. Let there be hope in our world. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yes. Let us be kind to one another in this world. Mm. And when I say in this world, I'm talking about not only the world at whole, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. talking about in our country, mm -hmm. in yeah. our state, yeah. county, yeah. city, neighborhood, community, in our families, mm -hmm. in our household. Let there be love. Let there be understanding. Mm. Let there be care for one another. Let there be great health. Let there be great wealth. Mm. Yes, yes. Let there be money in our accounts. All right. Yes. Let there be commas among commas <laughs> in our cash out <laughs> accounts. <laughs> Let there be strength in our yes. bodies. Yes. Let there be a controlling of our tongues when we talk to one another. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. All right. Let there be control when we have the desire to overeat. Mm -hmm. Let there be control when we have the desire to overspend. Mm. Yes. Let there be control when we have the desire to want to talk negative about one another. All right. Yeah, Let all there right. be. Yes. What are you letting there be in? Mm -hmm. yes. What is it that you desire from God? Yes. Mm. Whatever it is, let yes. there be. We have the power within us. Mm -hmm. yes. God gave us power to speak the things of God into existence. And notice, yeah, yeah. I said speak the things of God into yeah, existence. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, you might say, let there be my numbers win the mega million. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that might not be the will of God. So you have to go to God and say, God, let there be your will for my life. So when I say Things, it is your will. That's it. That's it. See, a lot of times we say things and it's our will, but we like to try to make it God's will. That's right. Uh -huh. that's right. Again, that's putting words and thoughts in the mind of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. We have to ask God his what thoughts and mm -hmm. then make his thoughts our thoughts that's and right. not the other way around. That's it. That's you know, it. we like to say things like, you know, it's a shame how it's so much crime going on in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Won't you say, let there be no more crime? Yeah, 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 yeah. Won't you say, let there be no more gun violence? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let there be no more break-ins in our homes. Yes. Let there be no more taking advantage of our youth. Uh -huh. yes. uh -huh. Let there be no more taking advantage of our civil rights. Thank you, God. Yes. Let there be what it is that we desire from the Lord. Lord, let thy will be. Let uh -huh. there be peace on earth. Yes. See, we have the power in us. Yes. Yes, Lord. Let there be voices singing praises of your goodness. Yes. 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 Let there be when we pray, we have the power to believe what we pray will come to be. Mm -hmm. God showed us the way. Yes. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God decided to use these three words to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let there be. Let there be. Be. Let there be a new car in our garage. Mm -hmm. Let there be no payments to have to be made for it. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Let there be a new house in that near future. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let that be a gift given from known and or unknown sources. All right. See, you All have right. to understand the power of words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of us say so many jacked up words, I have to temporarily go deaf to keep it from entering into my ears. Yes. Mm. And though I might smile when I hear the words, I'm just thinking such thoughts that you would be upset to know what I think sometimes when I hear certain <laughs> words coming from certain people. But we have to speak words of love. Yes. yes. Love, words of kindness, words of hope, words of faith, words of power. We know all the negative words that you have spoken. Yeah, yeah. We've heard them over and over. Yes. Give us some new things that you can say. Tell us some new words of hope and power and yeah. love and kindness that'll make a difference in our life. That will give us the energy to go on and see what the end's going to be. Tell us something like that every now and then. Quit telling us all your problems. That's God's problem. Yeah, yeah. Ain't mine. Ain't yours. Mm -hmm. We talk. We give so much power to action because of the power of the words that we communicated with. God, in his infinite power, in his infinite wisdom, could have done anything he wanted to do with the universe. But he decided to create it. <laughs> and create it as an opportunity for us to fellowship in and live in under his will. Yes. Yes. And the words he chose to create, the first thing that we had in life of light, was let there be. Yes, I want to be around some let there be Christians going forward. Yes. I want to be around some people. If you see something going on in my life, you say, Lord, let there be a change in this life. Yeah. All right. All right. If I see something going on in your life, I should be able to go to the Lord and say, Lord, let there be a change in his or her life. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If I see you not loving, my job is, Lord, let there be love coming in their life. Mm. All right. If I see you unemployed, I should be able to say, Lord, let there be a job with great benefits and great yeah. pay in their life. Thank you, God. If I see you and you are struggling in your weight, I should be able to go to the Lord and say, Lord, let there be a way that they might not have to struggle with their weight in their life. Uh -huh. See, we have the power of prayer, and we have the words that God gave us on how to make things happen, and all that we have to do is use them. Yes. So will you incorporate, let there be in your life yes. for the things that God would desire for your life, and if God desired for your life, who are we? Not to desire and or want it for our life. That's it. That's it. Yes, yes. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be prayer right now.